Hey everybody, Steph here. So in this video, I'm going to talk about business negotiating tactics. And this is something that can be used whether you are a freelancer developer, or maybe you're working for somebody and you want to you know, negotiate positions, negotiate uh, your salary and so on. So I've been a coder since the early nineties, but in fact, I've been a business owner for longer. I started my first business when I was 18 years old. It was an import-export business, so it wasn't related to technology at all, in fact. But my business led me to technology because in 1994, I built my very first website to basically promote my business and to get contracts uh, overseas. Now, today, that's no big deal, but back in the 94, 95, this is brand new. I had one of the first websites in the world that actually had images. Uh, most websites were just academic sites from universities, and they were just uh, gray backgrounds with purple text and blue text, believe it or not. So, yeah. So, anyway, business negotiating tactics. And uh, so here's the very first one I'm going to talk about. It's very common, actually. And uh, what it is, basically, is you're going to push really hard when you open your negotiation. So let's say you're bidding on a contract and uh, you want 5,000 for it. You figure it's gonna, it's gonna be worth 5,000. So you might go in there, depending, and say, you know what? I think it's gonna be about 10,000. I think it's gonna be 10,000. Now, let me just say, I'm giving you a basic argument here, a basic example rather. And there's all kinds of things you got to consider, how big the contract is, how much leverage you have, blah, 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 blah. It can go on for a long time. But anyway, I just want you to understand, I just want you to understand the basic principle of this tactic. So you go in there and you push really hard with a, a heavy demand. And then in the negotiation, you're going to come back. And there's an expectation of that. So if you are ever approached by somebody who's... Um, wants to buy something from you, whether you know, you're selling your services or you're selling your car. Uh, if you're dealing with people who are experienced negotiators at all, experienced business, you have to assume that they're going to hit you with a heavy duty um, offer, right? Something that's extreme because they're going to expect that you're going to try to walk them back. So they're always, it's, it's, it's a game that people play and it's a psychological game more than anything else. And people do it all the time, right? They do uh, business, nego business negotiations is really a big game of psychology and persuasion. It's a big part of it. And it's something you got to learn if you're going to be a freelancer because for you to secure your free freelance jobs, you have to start understanding how people work in terms of negotiating positions and so forth. So let me give you another tip. I was only going to do one tip, but I did the first negotiating tip so easily, so quickly. I decided I'm going to give you tip number two. Now this is tip, this tip I'm going to call 50 million chickens. It's the 50 million chicken tip. And why do I call it 50 million chickens? Because this is a tactic, a business negotiating tactic but I learned from a guy who was uh, at the time much older than me who ran a $50 million business and he sold chicken products. He sold all kinds of different types of chickens. In fact, you'd go to his office, he'd have all these stuffed chickens all around his office. I didn't know there was all these uh, varieties, variety of chickens out there. It was, you know, it was new to me at the time. So it was kind of a strange, surreal experience. You walk into this big guy's office and he's got all these stuffed chickens everywhere. And his business, did, at the time, did about $50 million a year in sales. So a decent sized business. So I used to call them 50 million chickens. And uh, so 50 million chickens did some business with me. And one day, uh, when I was sitting in on a couple of meetings with him, we had one of his uh, suppliers, I believe it was, come in to a meeting. No, it wasn't a supplier. In fact, it was somebody he was trying to set up a deal with. And he freaked me out with, with, with his tactic. Now, what he did was this. 
the guy comes in, he sits down, and they start talking, 50 million chickens start talking to this guy about uh, some details about the deal. So then out of the blue, 50 million, 50 million chickens, he goes to the guy, hey, so uh, how's your wife? Is she hot? You know, do you, you know, do you, you know, do this? And he starts getting into some pretty uh, salacious, we'll just say, details right there. In the, in the office, in the boardroom, I'm sitting at the table, a VP sitting at the table, and he starts asking these lewd questions. And you can see that the guy in front of 50 million chickens is, is getting a little, like, you know, he's, he's, he's like, what, what's, why is this guy asking these questions? And he's, he's getting a little bit flustered, right? Anyway, this went on for about a minute or so, and then they just continue with their negotiations and so forth. So when the guy left, 50 million, 50 million chickens told me, he said, you know you know, he started chuckling, you know, and he said, yeah, he just did it in, you know, I'll give you the reader's digest version, the short version. It was a tactic. He wanted to throw the guy off his game. He wanted to get him emotional because he knows, any boxer will tell you this, I learned this in boxing as well, and in martial arts, if you are emotional, your ability to think clearly and to act clearly will be uh, hindered. So what 50 million chickens would do is he would go in there and, you know, you got to be, you got to know when you can do it, when you can't do it. He would go in there and say things and do things to, to throw people, to get them emotional, to get them off their game. And you see that with fighters, for instance, though, before a fight, sometimes, sometimes it's a show to drive up sales, but sometimes they literally are trying to get their opponent angry at them or scared of them. And uh, so that really... Uh, redu makes them much more vulnerable when you get them in, in the ring, in fact, because their minds are clouded. Mike Tyson was famous in that regard. He would just scare the crap out of people. So when they would get in there, they would be like, ah, and he would just go boom, 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 and, you know, and that was it. So fear uh, is a great, great tool that s smart uh, business people will use, and they're not necessarily uh, very moral necessarily, but I'm just telling you, they use it all the time. They, f they use fear to drive people, they use anxiety to drive people, or they use greed, fear and greed. They use greed, say, you got to take this deal now, this is an amazing deal, you're not going to get a deal like this, that kind of stuff. So keep that in mind when you're freelancing, how you shouldn't be, well, you should try not to as much as possible to be emotional about a position. You shouldn't be, because you're just going to put yourself in a disadvantage, right? You're going to put yourself in a disadvantage. One trick that I do is if I'm a little angry about something or frustrated about something, I don't send that email then. I'll write it, and I won't send it. And be sure, don't put the guy's address in the, your, your two box. Just write the email, then put it in the, uh, in the drafts folder, and wait until you're no longer emotional, whether it be scared, whether it be angry, whether it be frustrated. And I guarantee you, nine times out of ten, when you do that, you're going to look at that email that you wrote when you're in that emotional state, and you're going to go, oof, I better change this line, I better change that line, I better change this line, right? Because remember, when you're in an emotional state, it clouds your, your cognitive mind, it makes it very difficult for, you, difficult for you to really see what the hell is going on. Oops, excuse that language. So, yeah, try to stay calm. And uh, remember that when you're emotional, your intellectual judgment is severely impaired. It's almost like being drunk and can be worse than being drunk. And uh, just so you know, I studied psychology in university. It was my major. It, wasn't a, it, wasn't a, it was my major, and uh, I did it for two years. I dropped out because my business started moving. But anyway, so that's another story. So there you go. There are my negotiating tips and some uh, business survival tips. Don't let the emotions carry you away. Bye-bye.